We're going to stay on the markets and bring in our next guest, Ernesto Ramos, CEO of VMO Global Asset Management. Sir, thank you so much for your time today. And, you know, markets having a really good day, a risk on session, at session highs, Dow's up 700 points. So looking past the Omicron variant for today, at least, right? So good news there. But I want to move a little bit further ahead to the end of the week when we get our next CPI read. Is the market ready for a handle that looks like it could come in very close to 7%. Uh, we think so. We think that the market is uh, priced in higher inflation for the time being. Uh, the question is, when will the inflation numbers start coming back down? Because the, cer the market certainly expects that by the end of next year, we're probably going to have uh, lower numbers. And we, we believe that to be the case. Uh, so for right now, we do expect a high number on Friday. But as we go into next year, those numbers will start to come off. For a couple of reasons, supply chain bottlenecks will start to ease on their own as, as the market resolves them. And uh, also there's a base effect. Uh, there was a big jump in CPI starting in March of this year. That'll start to come off. That base will uh, become higher for the numbers uh, going March and further out in 2022. So for various reasons, we expect uh, the the, uh, the CPI numbers to start to come off, and as well as the fact that uh, the Fed has now signaled a rapid pace, a more rapid pay, uh, pace of tapering, as well as potentially uh, Fed rate hikes for next year. But Ernesto, I wonder what's going to happen to market valuations, because a lot of them are pretty bloated right now. Uh, you know, I think the S&P is trading at something like 22 times uh, forward-looking yeah. earnings. Where are you seeing value right now? And do you think that the early part of next year is going to bring a pullback in some of these lofty valuations? Well, yeah. So again, going back to the, the Fed is definitely removing liquidity. That takes a lot of support away from stock prices, especially stock prices that are on the higher end. So we think that the stock market is still a better place to be than the bond market as a whole, but you have to be quite selective. And right now we're finding that selectivity, that opportunity more to be in higher quality, uh, but not too expensive stocks. Uh, off the top of my head, I can tell you things like AutoZone or waste management, companies that have very stable and solid operating models that are trading at a discount to what their intrinsic value is, and they're not necessarily the, the fad or the, or the stocks that everybody's piled in, such as your high tech uh, companies that are now not leading the way anymore and perhaps not going to lead the way into 2022 because they did so well for the last three years and the valuations got so high. And as I said again uh, before, the, the, the Fed pulling back doesn't support the case for such high valuation stocks to continue to do well. And then Ernesto, I want to turn your attention to earnings. So we had a pretty good season, right? And the companies that did well, we saw were the ones who were able to absorb inflationary costs or pass them on to the customer. But how much longer can they keep taking this sort of punch to the chin from inflation? Because right now, you know, consumers are, are, are you know, dealing with it. They'll pay more because wages are raising. But as, as inflationary pressures, as you say, will creep up even further going into the first part of the year, you know, wages may not increase at the same rate or may start to slow. So, you know, what happens to companies then? Yeah, and that's, so So right now we have inflation, we have wages, we have the labor market in general, we have Fed policy. All of these are uh, not as easy to, to to forecast as they were a few months ago. And, and the fact that the outcomes for all of these, which are, of course, interrelated, have become much more uh, f flatter or diversified means that you have to take a very selective approach to the stocks that you want to own because you just don't know if inflation will, uh, we know it will tick up in the short term, but when will it start to tick down? Economic growth, we know it's going to, probably come off of these levels, but when exactly? We, we just don't know. There's so much uncertainty right now that you have to diversify your portfolio. And again, for earnings, you have to look for those companies that have a good earnings uh, forecast in front of them, but 
one with reasonable certainty. And again, companies that are, do not depend so much on the economic cycle and do not depend so much on, on, on their own intrinsic prospects for growth uh, because they tend to be so expensive are the places to be. So again, I go back to the examples I just gave you. AutoZone, a company where it's re related to self-repair of cars, or waste management, a company that is going to be, there's going to be trash no matter no matter what part of the economic cycle we're in, and they're going to grow at a steady, uh, high, high single-digit pace. Those are the companies right now, because of their valuation, that we favor because of the uncertainty of the environment. We just don't, we can't really pick uh, precisely what the, part of the market's going to do well. So we'd rather take a safer view and, and go to high quality, profitable, uh, less uh, uh, less expensive companies such as the ones I just mentioned to you. And Ernesto, I'm curious how much of your portfolio was dedicated to Chinese stocks. I mean, just today, we've got that troubled real estate developer Evergrande inching closer uh, to defaulting, um, yet to be seen if the government's going to run in to, to catch it. Uh, but do you have exposure to China? And if so, where? No, we do not have exposure to China. We have a couple of, in our global portfolios, we own a couple of stocks in Hong Kong, but we're sh we're making sure that the, none of these are exposed to the real estate market in China because, I mean, you just mentioned yet again another risk. What do we know about Evergrande? We, we know that it every month it struggles to make its interest, of, interest uh, payments and somehow or other it manages to do so. For how much longer? Probably for the foreseeable future, the government will step in and, and help out as needed. But there's another sorts of uncertainty. And of course, if the real estate market in China were to get beyond the ability of the government in China to, to help it out, that would cause major ripples in the entire financial sector uh, worldwide. So we don't want to we don't want to see that. And there's a small probability that'll happen, but there is a there is still a chance that that could happen. So another source of uncertainty for these markets, besides all the ones we've talked about. So so really uh, unprecedented uncertainty uh, levels about so many things these days. So again, stay safe, stay in companies that are high quality with, with stable operating models and not too, too attractive, not too expensive uh, for, for, for safety's sake and, and downside protection. And Ernesto, really quickly, want to ask you, you know, what impact do you think DC politics has on markets going into the near future? Because we still have this Build Back Better plan that's up in the air. We don't know if it will pass, probably not in its current form. Um, how does that impact markets, in your opinion? Well, so far, the fact that Build Back Better hasn't passed, I think has been taken quite well by the market because that would be another source of inflationary pressures and, and another source of, of, of uh, ramping up the debt. And it's it's really not so much an infrastructure problem as a, as a program, as a, so, as a social equity program. So people and the markets themselves are not convinced that this would be good for the economy. And so uh, I'm quite happy to see it languish there and get cut back aggressively down to what really is focused exclusively on economic uh, growth and in economic initiatives and away from the more social uh, welfare types of, 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 of provisions in it. So uh, I think, uh, thanks to Manchin, uh, Senator Manchin and Senator Cinema, it will come down to from where, uh, certainly where, from where it started, which is $3.5 trillion. Now it's down to 175 and probably headed even lower than that. So that's that's quite uh, quite good for, for the markets as, as, we see, as we see it from here. I guess we'll all have to wait and see. Ernesto Ramos, CIO BMO Global Asset Management, thank you so much for your insight today.